let's jump into the Baylor basketball game against Texas. That overtime win, 84 to 83, uh, a huge game for the Bears. Absolutely incredible. Um, this was a game that was grinded out, fought to the end, obviously because it went into overtime. I mean, the Bears were had uphill battles to climb throughout the game. I mean, they were down by 19 at one point. They were down 40 to 29 at the half. Um, and when they were down by 19, it was 55 to 36 with 14 minutes left. So uh, pretty steep hill to climb there. And then they were down 62 to 45. That's a 17-point deficit with eight minutes left. And then they were also down 81 to 75 in the overtime with less than two minutes left. So if you were to give me any of those scenarios, you would probably assume – this isn't going to go well, but obviously the Bears fought through and won that game. What was your thoughts on, the, on that game? Well, uh, Baylor had a 99.9% chance to lose that game. Yep, that awesome ESPN left. metric that you can um, watch during the game. Right. <laughs> uh, numbers never lie, apparently. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> I was busy that night. I didn't turn that game on until about five minutes left when uh, I saw that Baylor was starting to creep back a little bit. And, I mean – it was one of those things where you're watching the game and you could see the momentum start to shift in Baylor's favor, but you're like, there's no way. Right. Because Texas was making so many shots. Um, <laughs> but Baylor just kind of kept grinding their way back into it. Mario had the best game of his career with 24 points. Yeah. Um, and somehow they just – they somehow they pushed it to overtime. And then in overtime with 10 seconds left, Texas had the ball and they threw the ball in. And Baylor tried to foul him. Yeah, and, and they traveled it over. Yeah. And I don't think the ref would have called that travel unless Scott Drew wasn't telling him that it was a travel, which was the correct call. Yeah. But everything just switched so suddenly. Yeah. And Baylor gets the ball. Mario makes two free throws. And we somehow win. Yeah. And, and it was just crazy because we were down 81 to 75. And then, and, and before even that, Jared Butler pulls up and hits a three, and you're like, don't shoot, don't shoot. And he pulls up, hits this tremendous three. You're like, okay, all right, we're three point game, I guess, you know, with what it was probably like a minute and a half left in the overtime or whatever the case may be. And, you know, then Mark Vital hits a layup to make it a one point game, and then they have that turnover. And that, and just like that, it, it's that one of those moments in basketball. I mean, this happens a lot in basketball where. Uh, at the end of the game, something like that will happen where, you know, the team that just needs to go to the free throw line and, and sink the game turns the ball over instead of staying true with the ball. And then next thing you know, they're a threat to lose instead of just guarding the win, you know. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was really interesting. Just it was a hard fought game. Like you said, Mario was huge in this game. He made uh, it, it was essentially I thought it was just perfect that. Mario was the one to kind of hit those game-clinching free throws. 24 points, 7 rebounds, 3 assists, and he was 4 of 6 from 3. I mean, that's, you know, one of his better games of the year for sure. Uh, I want to go off on a side tangent. I haven't yeah. even talked to you about this yet. Yeah. Um, player pronunciations. Yes. Something that we've noticed uh, a lot if you're watching the broadcast on TV is that announcers tend to call Mario Kegler Mario. <laughs> and I, I've never heard I've never someone heard anybody Super Mario Party, right? So like, <laughs> even the benefit of the Mario doubt, Kart, it's, it's Mario. <laughs> um, you just said Mark. Say his last name. Vital. Vital. Yeah. It's vital, isn't it? I think it's vital. But some people say vital. Some people go, but either way, it's like, <laughs> some it's like people Dick will vital. say vital, and then some people will say vital the next sentence. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, and then there's Matthew Meyer. Yeah, Matthew Meyer. They not, messed that up a lot. Not Matthew Meyer. Yeah. Matthew Meyer is definitely how to pronounce it. That's the one I'm for sure about. Mark Vital and Var Vital always confuse me. And it's definitely Gillespie, not Gillespie, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, Freddie, cool. okay, Freddie cool. Gillespie gotcha. every single time. And he had a great game in this game, too. Eight points, 11 rebounds, four blocks. I mean, his defensive – I never personally – uh, I'm going to be blunt, like I was never a big fan of Freddie from when he entered this program, and I think it was because I played him at the Slick. <laughs> Funny story, so like one of my first weeks at Baylor as a freshman, I went to the Slick, and, you know, Freddie walks in, and I'm thinking, oh, gosh, we're going to get killed. 
uh, <laughs> because we had no one that was maybe within a foot of his height. Like we were all short guys. We had no one to guard him. And he must have not been trying at all, which he probably wasn't, but he just missed like every layup and missed, you know, every rebound and was traveling all over the place. And then, yeah, I saw that he was on the basketball team and I was like, what? (laughs) This guy's on the basketball team and now he's out there and he's really improved. And Mm -hmm. I'm sure that day at the Slick, he probably wasn't trying anyways, but, you know, now he's really shown that he is – someone that the Bears can rely on. I mean, four blocks, I mean, that. when you see someone get high numbers of blocks, it's always just it shows you that they were just dominant in the paint. Sometimes when you even only get one block, you're dominant in the paint because, or two, you know, they're basically just. <laughs> he, he only had two fouls, too. Yeah, two fouls. And, you know, if you're in the paint holding down the fort, you might not get the blocks because they're not even trying against you because they're not even like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna shoot this floater over Freddie because he's gonna block it right and I don't think that it would I mean we have to give a shout out to Bandu Ooh, in the clutch Texas in game. this game 18 points in 29 minutes and he missed one one shot he has proven to be a clutch guy I am so excited yeah. to watch him in the, in the future honestly I think, even yeah. in March just like with the tournament coming up but especially going next year yeah. um we're going to have some good guards next year. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be insane. And, and and once he gets put in the starting lineup, I feel like it's just bombs away. Like, mm-hmm. he is going to be – and if he is shooting at this rate now, he is going to be even better going forward, you know? Absolutely. Um, yeah, so he had 18 points, four or five from three, and that's off the bench. Jared Butler came in, 15 points, five rebounds, four assists in that starting role, continuing to show that he's a great freshman addition to this team. Uh, Mark Vidal, <laughs> Mark Vidal, 13 points, eight rebounds, three assists, and obviously his his production is more just his fight during the game and his defense and his prowess on both sides of the ball, just around the rim. Um, yeah, so I think, I his think stats aren't always there, but you know, 13 and eight is nothing to shrug at. I feel like there's so many stats that we can look at in this game. Another one is Vidal was seven for seven from the free throw line. Yeah, which is I don't doesn't think it's happen ever. ever. <laughs> um, it is a coin flip every fantastic. single time he goes to the line, <laughs> and every single one of them counted. Another one is that t- uh, Texas shot 56 percent from the three point line. No team ever loses when they take 27 threes. <laughs> I can't remember what their three-point per- percentages was against us last time when they beat us 84-72, but it was very high like that. Mm-hmm. It was very high, and they hit a ton of threes, and that's how they killed us. Yeah. Um, and um, what was it? I can't remember how to pronounce his name. It's like Febris. Yeah, Febris. Febris. He, had, he was 7 of 14 from three. Who so takes 14 threes? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I thought it, we had this one in the back. Grace and I were talking. We had a preview of this last week on the podcast, and we were talking about, you know, like, no Roach, they're not going to be able to score. And they went out and scored 83. And that's surprising. And a lot of it was because of his seven three-pointers that he put up. Um, and, and that was tough on the Bears. But I think the one thing that really, really stood out to me was Baylor finally fixed that free throw issue in this game because they've been giving up so many free throws. Um, and even in their previous game before this, they had given up 35 or 34 free throws. Um, and you you can't do that. You can't give up 35 free throws and expect to win a game. And in this game, ba- Baylor only gave up 11 free throw attempts to the to the Longhorns. So they were six for 11, and Baylor was 20 to 24. So finally, they took advantage of being aggressive and staying solid on defense, and that really helped them, especially down the stretch of a game when you know you can get caught with ticky tack fouls. And um, like you said, Freddie did a great job down low, t- staying solid and not fouling, and still getting. 